How to Take a Manual Blood Pressure Measurement There are two ways to record the measurements you take, so it's important to have one of these methods to hand before taking any readings, the MMM app or by using the document we provide. It's important that the patient doesn't smoke, drink alcohol or a caffeinated drink within 15 minutes prior of a blood pressure measurement. Blood pressure can be measured by an automated device or by a conventional sphygmomanometer using a stethoscope. Firstly, the patient's posture is important. Sit them with their back supported and their elbow at about the level of their heart with the arm supported. Legs should not be dangling and should be uncrossed. The patient should now rest quietly in this position for five minutes prior to the first blood pressure measurement being taken. If using a sphygmomanometer, the length of the bladder on the device should be 80% of the circumference of the upper arm. Larger, more muscular people with thick arms need a larger bladder. So at this point, you'll need to measure the arm and use the appropriate cuff size. Preferably, measurements will be taken from the left arm only, but the right arm is also acceptable. Leaving the cuff's lower edge about an inch above the bend of the elbow, place the cuff over their bare arm, close the cuff around the arm, and then stick the Velcro together at the ends of the cuff. You'll need to measure the heart rate of the patient by feeling for the pulse in their wrist and counting how many pulses per minute. It's important to record the heart rate after measuring the heart rate, it's time to measure the blood pressure. For best results, don't talk during the measurement. Place the earpieces of the stethoscope in your ears and hold the stethoscope bell at the side of the cuff away from the heart and over the brachial artery, which is found in the inner area of your bent elbow. You should hear the steady thump in the brachial artery. Tighten the screw at the side of the rubber bulb and squeeze the bulb. Air is pumped into the bulb and the cuff will expand. The cuff is inflated until the blood flow through the brachial artery stops. With sufficient compression, the cuff cuts off blood flow through the artery and no sound is heard in the stethoscope. The pressure in the cuff is increased rapidly to 30 millimeters of mercury above the point that no blood flow is taking place through the cuff. When no sound can be heard in the stethoscope, or when a pulse can no longer be felt in the wrist. Turn the screw again to loosen the valve in the bulb and to lessen the air pressure. Pressure is then decreased so that the rate of drop is two millimeters per second. When the pressure falls to the point that blood begins to flow through the artery again, the number that the column of mercury has risen to at the first sound heard in the stethoscope is the systolic blood pressure, SBP the first number in the blood pressure reading. Look at the column of mercury to see the number at that pressure point. When the cuff decompresses to the point that blood flows freely in the artery, the sound is no longer heard in the stethoscope. The number next to the top of the column of mercury when the sound ceases is the diastolic blood pressure, DBP, the second number in the blood pressure reading. Again, look at the column of mercury to see the number at that pressure point. Record the SBP and the DBP numbers immediately, don't depend on memory, and note the arm, right or left, used for taking the measurement is noted. Take another two measurements in the same way, leaving a one minute interval in between each reading and recording the measurements with the same arm. High blood pressure or hypertension is when the systolic number is 140 or more most of the time and the diastolic number is 90 or more most of the time. If your patient shows consistently abnormal readings, it is important to let them know of further treatment and advice that is available to them.